I think it was a Tuesday night that we decided to go to dinner to talk things over. As you can imagine, when a couple isn't seeing eye to eye, things can get a little tenuous. I said something inflammatory, she came back with a doozy. Next thing you know, we are in the middle of a nice restaurant having the biggest fight of our marriage. After 21 years of marriage, Charlotte and I had hit a brick wall. There just didn't seem a way that we could get over this thing. Even though we had managed to raise five children, graduate from nursing school, we graduated from medical school, we started and still own a practice today. We had one huge issue in our life, and that was sex. Now, as we got older, our intimacy seemed to get a little uh, mechanical, it was forced. It didn't matter what I did, it didn't seem like I could break this code. <laughs> what is it about my sexy 39-year-old wife that has her not wanting to hug me for too long because it may lead to sex or get undressed in front of me or take a shower with me in the room? Even the times when she would make a good effort at intimacy, it seemed like I was watching a hostage video sometimes instead of a, <laughs> a love scene. <laughs> it goes without saying, she just didn't have that feeling anymore. So I searched high and low for an answer, and I really just came up with nothing. Even the uh, marriage counselor that I talked to in the scene looked at me after she found out I was an OBGYN and said, well, you're the doctor. Don't you have something for her that would help? <laughs> I'm like, no, of course not. There's nothing in the literature that talks about low libido in a 39-year-old woman. Now, because the fight seemed inevitable and I didn't see a way out, I decided to settle. I settled with the idea that we were going to be great friends, married, business partners, but we just weren't going to be lovers. So now fall of 2013 comes around and we go to this conference. And at this conference, we run into an OBGYN from Chicago who describes this hormone pellet therapy that she was doing that was changing the lives of her patients. She described how hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, low libido. Wait a minute, hold the phone. Did you just say low libido? No question, I had to learn this therapy. I go off and get trained, come back, and of course my first willing participant was my lovely Charlotte D. Now in the back of my mind I'm thinking, there's no way that this 39-year-old woman, hormones are that far off. That was true all the way up to the day that I got her lab work back. Everything was jacked up. Her FSH was elevated, her estrogen was low. Okay, so this is the night sweat she's dealing with. Her testosterone was almost non-existent. And so, was this the key to what was going on as far as her libido was concerned? Couple hormone pellet doses later, it was on and popping. <laughs> to say that we were doing better would be an understatement. <laughs> Life had gotten so much better for us. Our marriage turned around and revolutionized. Things went so well with just adjusting her hormones that I decided to, let me take a look at myself. Now, I had heard about low testosterone and the effects that it can have on a man. I was dealing with some weight and, you know, I was getting tired all the time. So I decided to check my testosterone levels. June 2nd, 2014, I found out that I was an 80-year-old man. <laughs> now, I know all you are saying, you look great for an 80-year-old. But it was on that day that I found out that my testosterone level was 316. Now, let me put this in perspective. You would expect an 18 to 20-year-old to have a testosterone around 1,000. At 43 years old, my testosterone was 316? Dang! Now, I, I expect my testosterone levels to kind of drop after age 30, but 316? I had to get more understanding about this. Out pops my old textbooks. I'm on Google searching. And I came to understand this one thing about low testosterone and about it as a hormone. Hormones are like these messengers with a key that go around unlocking the cell's potential. 
Now, to give you a visual of this, why aren't baby boys born with a full beard and mustache? <laughs> now, besides scaring the crap out of a new mom, <laughs> the reason is, is that testosterone hasn't been le released in high enough levels yet to unlock that cell's potential and those hair follicles that grow. Thinking about that, you can understand how important hormones are in our development. But I started thinking about what happens when your testicles betray you and your testosterone levels start to plummet. Well, for me, it was almost like I was carrying this bag of sand that somebody decided to poke a hole in. Insidiously, over time, I was getting fat, flabby, and fatigued. So I decided to get my tea up. Now, after the first dose of testosterone pellets, things started to change. 33 pounds of change, to be exact. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't as though the weight just fell off. Diet and exercise played a huge part in what I was doing. But here's where the testosterone came into play. I had these energy levels and the muscle development that was happening that it started to really change and transform my life. I got to the point where I had run a 10K. I did it a couple times. I was in the gym. Working out, started to see the gun show again, baby. <laughs> it was wonderful. Testosterone was being released in these younger levels, and it was unlocking these cells that I hadn't had unlocked in a long time. But here was the rub. It was kind of this man-in-the-mirror moment that I had. It wasn't all her fault. In my righteous indignation, I wanted to blame everything on my wife and how where she was at in this whole, whole process. The reality is, is that my low testosterone levels had caused a shift and a change in my body that didn't yell out, come get me, you sexy thing. <laughs> my testosterone levels had affected our marriage just as much as hers. Now, I could spend the rest of this talk describing to you how Men and women alike are affected by your hormones. How women can go through hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, low sex drive, and energy levels that can plague them for a decade before they even go into menopause. How the guys in the room, you could deal with these low testosterone levels that are causing you to have more central obesity and fat around your organs that can lead to high cholesterol, hypertension, diabetes, heart disease. I could even tell you about testosterone being used, in some cases, to treat osteoporosis by itself, to treat Alzheimer's disease, to treat Parkinson's disease. I can even tell you about the patients that I have personally treated in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s that are regaining their life back because of these elevated levels of hormones in their life. But I have one big point that I want to make sure we all get. It's the idea of settling. Now, as we age, we expect that our hormone levels will start to drop, and this becomes our new normal. Now, just because your car gets old doesn't mean that you're going to stop changing the oil in it. On the contrary, you realize that there's more care as the car gets older. Listen, you're not just tired all the time. The kids aren't the reason why your sex drive is gone. And it may not just mean that you have a poor ability to lose weight because you pick up the fork too often. It's your hormones. I will tell you that your hormones are not a part of any routine testing you're going to get done at a doctor's office. If you want it, you're going to have to ask for it. I will also tell you that there is a lot of people that will tell you, a lot of physicians that are going to tell you that it's not even really necessary. I'm here to tell you that your hormones can affect your weight, your sex, your sleep, your energy, your emotions. They affect your life. In the wall of my office, there is a quote that says, to improve is to change, to perfect is to change often. Now, the first place I actually, this was actually said by Winston Churchill, but the first place I actually heard it was on the House of Cards, and for some reason I thought Frank Underwood said it. <laughs> <laughs> it shows me that reading is definitely fundamental and don't get your history lessons from Netflix. 
Also, I don't want you guys to settle with these low and unproductive hormones in your life. It may mean that you have to find a physician that will listen to you when you say, I just don't feel right anymore. Let's all be like Winston Churchill. Let's improve, let's change, let's perfect, but please, please don't settle.